feel like the government does not have the money available to settle the grievances or the, the salaries of, of these lecturers and they have actually accentuated on the fact that lecturers were out of their area of function. Does that alone uh, suffice why uh, the demands, especially uh, the, the, the remuneration of uh, the striking lecturers does the, 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 this uh, suffice the, the suspension of uh, their salaries. I think we, we need to restate the fact that the action of the government is condemnable. It is condemnable to the point that if you understand what, who academics are, you will then appreciate the fact that their work is not just to lecture. Their work is essentially uh, to research. There is also the, the community work aspect of their work. So how did the government quantify uh, the pro rata basis on which they are paying right now? And how does the government also quantify the extra hours that the lecturers are putting to, to make up for the periods that they were not in class? That as we speak now, as the universities reopened, a lot of lecturers are working almost 18 hours to ensure that they cover the lost grounds. I think the, the point to be made is that there is a conscious effort by not just Nigerian government, by the IMF and the World Bank that continues to talk about the withdrawal of government from public you know, uh, education. You have a situation in which, as we speak now, consequences. the consequences is that there are more private universities or educational supermarkets that are emerging right now and against the destruction and the liquidation of the public universities. And the public universities are where the children of the poor are not so poor and middle-class people can send their children. Most of these private universities are out of reach of the ordinary Nigerian. So we must first and foremost understand the philosophy that drives you know, this whole government attitude. You are the one that Asu wrote 10 letters, 10 or more than 10 letters, reminding you that there is a need to renegotiate the agreements that you entered into with them. You failed to respond to those letters. The process of getting strikes by the academics is a very tedious one. If you understand how strikes are achieved in ASU, you would then know that the government itself played completely, you know, if, if you permit the use of that word, didn't want to take any action on an agreement. So the question of not having the money is not is not the issue. The government has the resources because these agreements always understand that it is us sitting on one side of the table, the government and the people they appointed to negotiate on their behalf sitting on one part of the table, and at the end of the day, an agreement is reached. If you do not have the means to fulfill that agreement, the honorable thing to do is to get back. You don't wait for ASU to call you. You get back to ASU and say, because of X, Y, Z, we are not able to meet the agreement we reach with you. But that will not happen until there is a strike action, until there is a plea, until for people who are rendering patriotic service to their country. So I think that the industrial court and self-respecting people of Nigeria will need to persuade the government not to allow a new crisis in the educational, tertiary educational sector of Nigeria. Because what is happening is that if this issue is not resolved, we are likely going to go into another cycle of, you know, cycle of uh, uh, industrial action, which will not go well for public education. And that is the point that we are interested in, that if you destroy public education, if you continue to allow the festering of these educational supermarkets called private universities, the children of the poor and not so poor will not have education. Right now, all around Africa, we are glamorizing entrepreneurship. 
we are making it look like people don't need to go to school. That if they can't go to university, they should drop out and go and become shoemakers. They should become this and that. And they talk about silicon value and all of those issues. But the, the, the value of education is not just about, you know, earning a living. It is about the actualization of the self in a way that people can make critical decisions that affect their life. And that is what the ruling class of Nigeria does not want at this time. They want to impoverish the people, pauperize them, and ensure that they are not even able to make that conscious decision of, by, by themselves. And that is the target. That is the eventual target of the kind of educational policy that Adamu Adamu and his comrades are, are, are pursuing. So we need to situate it properly, because if you talk about no pay, all of those are extension of the onslaught against public education. At the end of the day, most of these lecturers will leave the, the public universities and migrate to the private universities or even go out of the country. And at the end of the day, we will continue to then have a situation in which public universities will not rank even 1,000 among the, the ratings, not just even in Africa, talk of uh, outside, outside Africa. Afrique Média, le monde, c'est nous.